All right, so I got a story here for you guys that I have not seen many people talking about, and yet it is extremely important if you are somebody who cares about the future of trying to get something like Medicare for All passed in the United States, or if you care about even protecting uh, Medicare as it exists right now, because the Joe Biden administration is basically putting the ratchet effect on full display right now by continuing a Trump era policy that is going to end up within a decade privatizing Medicare, which is one of the only you know actual good public programs that we have left in this country alongside things like uh, Social Security, etc. So uh, Pramila Jayapal actually came out with a statement condemning Biden and asking him to reverse uh, the trajectory that we are currently on. And she said, uh, so Jayapal to Biden, stop Trump era Medic Medicare privatization scheme while we still have the chance. And they said, quote, since direct contracting is a pilot program, it can and should be stopped in its tracks by the Biden administration. So what they're talking about here, this direct contracting thing, we're going to get into uh, a lot of the details here. But just to sum it up before we get into it, it's basically just adding a bureaucratic mess to Medicare and adding an unnecessary middleman uh, to the payment of how Medicare reimburses uh, a lot of these companies for uh, actual health care that is delivered to Medicare recipients. So uh, let's just go ahead and get into some of the details because again, this is a perfect example of the ratchet effect. And if you don't know what the ratchet effect is, it's basically as this is breaking down right here, uh, how you are being duped by the fake two-party system. Democrats or Republicans move everything to the right and Democrats block movement to the left. So Trump institutes this policy. And now uh, Joe Biden is basically refusing to undo it and blocking movement to the left. So here we got a, a great breakdown here in Common Dreams from Jake Johnson, who says that U.S. Representative Pramila Jayapal on Thursday joined the growing caucus or the growing chorus of physicians and advocates urging the Biden administration to immediately end direct contracting a Trump era pilot program that could result in the total privatization of traditional Medicare by the end of the decade. And in an op-ed for The Hill, Jayapal and Dr. Susan Rogers, president of the Physicians for a National Health Program, called direct contracting, quote, the biggest threat to Medicare that you've never even heard of, alluding to how little attention the pilot program has received from the press and members of Congress, few of whom have spoken out against it. So listen, I mean, as they were talking about here, we're talking about Medicare as we know it, basically being completely eviscerated and privatized and hijacked by Wall Street goons within a decade. Okay, so this is, you know, a, a, a siren if we've ever heard of one. And on top of that, we know the political situation, the political reality right now uh, with Joe Biden, his administration absolutely refusing to go out and fight for his own agenda, not getting anything substantive done that is going to motivate people to show up in 2022, let alone in 2024. So, I mean, we're on a trajectory right now where Democrats are going to get absolutely slaughtered in 2022 in the midterms, probably lose the House and the Senate, uh, or at least one of those. And then uh, on top of that, in 2024, Joe Biden or whoever they put up, whether it's Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, or any of these other uh, hollow corporate ghouls, none of them are going to be able to take on a Donald Trump or a Ron DeSantis. So if we're talking about, you know, a decade in a window of time to be able to reverse this current trajectory, then it's not even that we have a decade. We really more have like the next year, basically, in order for Biden to actually do something about this. But they continue here saying that starting this year, millions of seniors are quietly being enrolled into a program run by third party middlemen, the pair wrote on Thursday. And this is occurring without their full knowledge or consent. And if left unchecked, the DC program could could radically transform Medicare within a few years without input from seniors or even a vote by Congress. And they say established by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation at the tail end of the Trump administration, the DC model places so-called direct contracting entities between traditional Medicare and healthcare providers, a business-friendly alternative to traditional Medicare's direct reimbursement model. And we're going to get into why this is such a big problem, because basically, if you add the profit motive to uh, facilitating these payments between the healthcare providers and Medicare, Medicare who are reimbursing them for the treatment, then you're, they're going to be extracting excess revenue and stuffing it into their executives, executives' pockets instead of actually putting it into healthcare for seniors and people who qualify for Medicare. But they continue here saying that DCEs, which can be Wall Street-backed startups, private insurance giants, and other corporate interests are paid monthly by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to cover a defined portion of a patient's medical care. And because the DCEs can pocket what they don't spend on patients, critics fear that the pilot will incentivize the contracting entities to provide lower quality care. And yeah, no shit. This is what it looks like. We know the reality of the entirety of the U.S. healthcare system, which, you know, separate from Medicare and Medicaid is basically entirely for profit and in a, a capitalist enterprise structure. So yeah, we understand the motivations of this. This goes for any sector within a capitalist enterprise or economy. Um, this is just going to be the reality of it. If you have a profit motive, then their goal is going to be exp to expand their shareholder value 
And how do you do that? Well, you have to increase your profit margins. And how do you increase your profit margins? Well, in this specific case, it would be by denying good quality care to recipients of Medicaid and Medicare so that you can uh, go ahead and stuff that money that you would have been spending on good quality care into your own pockets and into the pockets of your shareholders. But they say that as Jayapal and Rogers noted in their op-ed, Wall Street investors are already tripping over themselves to get into the DC program. And a recent analysis published in uh, Health Affairs pointed out that 28 of the 53 DCEs currently operating in 38 states are controlled by investors and not healthcare providers. And I wonder again what the priorities of those investors are going to be. Probably not in line with public health uh, or for the well being of people who are on Medicare. But they continue here saying that this should be a huge red flag for taxpayers and anyone concerned about funding Medicare for future generations, they wrote. And while traditional Medicare it spends an impressive 98% of its budget on patient care, okay? Traditional Medicare spends nearly 100% on patient care, and these direct contracting entities only spend about 60% of our tax dollars on patient care, keeping up to 40% of revenues for their own profit and overhead. So, I mean, listen, this is, you know, it's kind of like keeping up with the details of this can be kind of boring and shit, but basically the outline of it is really obvious, okay? They're inserting, yet again, another mafia-like middleman into our healthcare, healthcare system, this time in Medicare, and those people, those investors, as they were saying, Wall Street-backed goons, are going to be using this as an opportunity to further profit off of our healthcare industry. And again, the way that you do that in a healthcare system that is for profit, and that, that is the model that we are going with, the way that you do that is by denying care to people as much as possible, or by reducing the quality of the care that they are going to be getting, so that you can save that money and put it in their own pockets. So this is your tax dollars. I mean, this is literally our money that is supposed to be going. You saw there 98% of the budget of traditional uh, Medicare goes towards actual care for Medicare recipients. And we're talking about like almost half of that revenue now uh, being stuffed into these executives' pockets to make them filthy rich while uh, Medicare recipients get absolutely uh, fucked over in the process. So this is, uh, is completely ridiculous, horrible, absolutely needs to be reversed by the Joe Biden administration. Is he going to do it? Probably not. We know who Joe Biden is. He is, you know, most like most people in the Washington, D.C. establishment, whether uh, Republican or Democrat, he is in the pocket of these uh, big health insurance uh, uh, companies and also in the pocket of Wall Street investors. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't take any action on this. But, you know, if we want to even talk about having a, the expansion of Medicare for all, which is how you would begin having, you know, a, an actual Medicare for all single payer system, you would start by expanding Medicare to cover more people within the American uh, uh, citizenry. So, you know, if that's the direction we want to be going, then this is heading in the complete opposite direction of that and uh, has to be stopped in uh, its tracks right now. So, you know, we need to have a lot more public pressure and a lot more public awareness of the fact that this is happening. Uh, Medicare, if it's privatized, then, uh, you know, a policy like Medicare for all basically has to be rewritten from scratch because we're not going to be able to expand on this system if it is fully corrupted.